expensive than influence people. I, I've, got, <laughs> I've got a realist slide in here, of course, because offensive. Parking your back without any bridge. Yeah, oh, which is aggression too. I mean, so I, I think the, the two words, the two meanings do have a, a layer of, of each other to some degree. Yeah, when would you start? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Screw the lay people. All right. Uh, in any event, uh, so the uh, the offense of that, we, we were waiting for you. Come on in. All right. Now we can start. Uh, <laughs> So, so yeah, the um, the offensive panel for those of you who don't know there's that, and I didn't write the description, but when I saw that uh, uh, line, must giving offense be avoided at all costs, and uh, you know, a right and draw is important. As, you know, of course it is <laughs> important that uh, that we are able to offend, and so. Uh, I'm the first offender, I guess. Uh, I'm Mike Dooley. I teach a uh, design history of comics and animation class at uh, Art Center. And <laughs> to, to my left. <laughs> or let's. Oh, am I to your left? Uh, well, it depends on how. To, yeah, to, yeah, stage left. Uh, anyway. So, I'm Jim Thompson. I'm, I'm a uh, family law attorney in Los Angeles. I also was a. Uh, teacher for uh, Duke University for 15 years on genre, but I included censorship in that syllabus uh, every single semester. I also, at USC, uh, helped teach uh, censorship in film, uh, and I interned in law school at Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, so I've got some censorship. you got some street cred. All right. And I'm offensive, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm on the offensive. Let's Okay. We'll tackle that later. Right. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. So I'm Mary Fleener, and I've been doing comics since 1984. And the reason I did comics is I wanted to be an underground cartoonist, and I wanted to take it as far as I could take it. And sometimes it's caused me problems, and sometimes it hasn't. But uh, it's amazing to me how just woefully ignorant people are, and I'm kind of like. What's the definition of offensive? I like that old phrase, opinions are like assholes. Everybody <laughs> has one. So um, I consider something offensive if you're hurting an animal. And uh, a naked body, a woman in Playboy is not offensive to me at all. So it's very subjective and everybody's got their own definition. And uh, I don't like it. I think we should be able to do whatever we want. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, not yeah. anarchy, but you know, freedom yeah. of expression. You. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. This this shows your range, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Life of the Party was a collection of the best stuff I did in my comic book called Slut Burger. Uh, that title alone caused me a lot of grief. In fact, I was a guest at Comic Con one year, mm -hmm. and the head of the distribution, some distribution company who will remain nameless. Um, was irritated by just the title. He was quoted in the comics journal, well, this is a children's event. How can we have a thing like Slutber? Of course, I haven't read it, but just the title alone is disturbing to me. And um, I thought I'd do a And the reason I wanted to do title Slutber is I wanted a title that attracted attention. I wanted something that made fun of a, a word that I think is so stupid. Men are studs, women are sluts, and they're sexually active. Uh, come on. So um, this was two of the covers that I did um, back then, and um, that guy on the right Look. who got the tattoo, that was a painting I'd done, and this guy bought it at the Comic-Con, and then I got this video a couple of years later of this guy with a whole back piece, and that was, that was pretty cool, but that's not really offensive, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of offensive titles? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I just, uh, these are just on the left, uh, some of the covers I've done for comics, and I just oh, love yeah, the covers. Oh, yeah, we can go, yeah. Yeah, so through quickly. Sure. Uh, I, tried a little, I tried an all-ages comic uh, with Matt Groening's company. Instead of Bongo, it was called Zongo. And it just wasn't a good fit for me. I like to do provocative things. I like to wrangle people. Um, so it's, I like to do things that press, you know, press buttons. And I tried hard to do uh, an all-ages thing, but it just wasn't my thing. So after three issues, I said, forget it. Um, Denny Eichhorn and I were kind of like 
cut from the same cloth, he was doing autobiographical stuff about his weird life, you know, in the category of you can't make this shit up. And um, he, uh, he seemed to never get as much uh, hassle from his material. It was way more provocative and erotic than mine, actually. And uh, he seemed to sort of sail through things unscathed. Uh, Mine Shaft is a, 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 a zine done from these people in North Carolina. It's offset printing, and they really put a lot of effort into it. And they don't pay anything because they don't make any money. They live in a little 800 square foot house, <laughs> and they had a daughter. But people like Art Spiegelman and Bill Griffith and, and Robert Crumb and Robert Armstrong are, are, are happy to support these people. They've been really nice to me. And that's a compilation. Okay, so let's get it. I'd like to talk about something. Um, I had a P.O. box in Encinitas, and um, I was getting a lot of fan mail, and a lot of people wanted to get, you know, try to get my attention. So people put on the envelope, uh, you know, hail Satan, or they say Satan kicks ass, or they blew a picture of a naked woman. And this caught the attention of some self appointed censor at the Encinitas post office. And so at that time, I was working for Hustler quite a bit and um, doing illustration. And um, I noticed some of my mail from Europe was always open. And I thought, well, you know, that's Europe. They open the mail, you know, all on. But the stuff from Beverly Hills was never open because it didn't say Hustler, it said LFP Projections. But still, mail was being open. I was always a little nervous because, you know, I, I've read a lot of articles in the 70s in Playboy magazine talking about sting operations. If you mail stuff over a state line, you could be breaking laws that you didn't even know about. So, um, I was in a magazine called uh, Women in General, Wig, and the logo was the female sign with the, um, the cross at the bottom. And uh, I got three cop contributors' copies, and the package was open, and every uh, issue had been bent, and folded, and obviously just, you know, in anger, open. And I started realizing, you know, I think my mail is being open. So I got a hold of the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund and talked to a, a, a guy named Mr. Joseph, who's uh, unfortunately has passed. And he said, well, just keep an eye on everything, and, you know, just, uh, you know, pay, pay attention. Sure enough, I got some more stuff open, so I closed my P.O. box. I know, I'm not messing with this anymore. This is just too much. A month later, I get child porno sent to my home. It was from, from some company in Tarzana, and it was called uh, uh, something Asian American Videos. And this forum had uh, questions like, do you like to rent videos with underage kids in them? Do you like to get videos where the actors appear to be underage but aren't? And it was just, I went, oh. My God, here it is. So I called Mr. Joseph again, surrender the document to the post office, he said, act like the outraged citizen, fill out a form, and while you're at it, get everything out of your house that you think can get you arrested. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Get the guns out of your house. I'm like, guns? <laughs> guns? But, so I did what he said, and I got in a big fight with the, with the guy at the post office, and uh, he, he almost didn't want to take my form. And I go, no, I'm giving you this form. You're going to put me in a file. I don't want to get the stuff anymore. And, but Mr. Joseph had warned me, you're now opening the door to have them inspect your mail to save you from these, the sting operation, you know, save you from whatever out there. So for the next 15 years, everything I had was open every Christmas, every box, everything. And it finally is starting to calm down. But the other thing they did is when you close your P.O. box, you're supposed to forward your mail for a year. They refused to do it. I would mail mail to friends. I had Pittsburgh, Texas, uh, all got returned. So I was, my, my civil rights were trampled at the Encinitas post office. And all those, the three people that were my suspects all quit shortly, you know, within about four months, and vanished. So be careful, you guys. And oh, and, and after this happened, then I started getting <coughs> orders. I'd like to get your sexy slut bird. <laughs> well, this is how they got Mike Diana, who we'll talk about later. So I really, I, I had a guardian angel watching over me. So that's my story. Uh, um, and while we're in the uh, the underground aspect, uh, Ken can talk about um, offensive without mentioning Bob Crumb. You said you had a. Uh, something recently about that that uh, you want to talk about? 
about uh, Rock Bot, about Robert Crumb? Well, the, 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 the most appalling thing is the SBX uh, comic convention, right. where a few years ago, uh, people were booing when they mentioned his name. You know, we wouldn't be here in the undergrounds if it weren't for Zach Comics and Robert Crumb. And, you know, uh, he didn't molest his daughter like Woody Allen. He didn't dose people like Bob, Bill Cosby. He didn't like force himself on women like that Weinstein shit had. You know, he's just lines on paper. Is it offensive to some people? Yeah. But if you're an idiot and you can't see what he's really talking about, the big picture and the human condition, it's like what he did with the eh, little takeover America and with the takeover America. Like these, these white supremacist magazines thought he was like, you're one of them. And they didn't get it. You, you, you know, ironic satire requires a certain amount of intelligence with people. And if you don't have that intelligence, well, that's your problem. But there should be laws protecting those of us who want to exercise our First Amendment rights. So. Yeah, and that was uh, just to name names. That was uh, Ben uh, Passmore that was doing the inciting there. Uh, the guy who did it, or the guy who was running the the panel. The uh, he's he's a uh, comics artist. His his uh, big thing most recently was the Bottom Feeders comic. Anyway, who knows Ben Passmore here? Okay. Passmore. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, uh, it's, yeah, he's, he's a comics uh, guy, well, and he's, uh, well, you know, he's black and he was taking, a, you know, when he was saying, you know, this shouldn't tri oh, be that way. Yeah. I, I get it. And, um, oh, and they, like Angel Food McSpade, he was a, well, some yeah, people said they made chocolate was, bars out of Angel Food McSpade, yeah. and they didn't do that. Red Dennis Kitchen wouldn't be that stupid. <laughs> they were devil girl chocolate bars, and that's all it was, and this person is insane to think that the me that he did not. But that's that kind of stuff drives me crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. Hey, um, so I'm done until next <laughs> Oh okay. Uh, yeah, we have, we already covered that. Okay. And uh, for me, the trigger warning, this is what I always show in my class uh, when I talk about um, political cartoons. Uh, the idea is um, that if you know, you are offended by images. It's okay with me if you leave the class for the duration of when I'm talking about this and then come back, um, you know, when you, when you feel safe. Uh, the, whole, the whole idea behind them agree is that, you know, a, um, a, a picture of a pipe is not a pipe and, you know, or like Bob Crumb says, it's just lines on paper, folks. And, uh, and yet there was the, uh, we had a news, uh, we had a uh, weekly newspaper over in Paris, uh, Charlie Hebdo. Yeah, if anybody is, you know, is confusing images with actual people, uh, please leave now, because uh, this, well, this is what I'm going to uh, want to talk about. And there, take no prisoners. You can see, you know, uh, re religion, no, uh, no sacred cows at all. They, they you know, specialized in various uh, sorts of religion and, you know, uh, the the idea of uh, offensiveness, it's, you know, it could be their slogan, um, that, that sort of thing. And uh, so in 2006, uh, there was a Danish newspaper uh, printed a dozen Mohammed cartoons, with, you know, which is really, uh, you know, start, starting the, uh, the whole problem with um, the jihad you know, going at, you know, you should not because our image is sacred. You know, you, you shouldn't do that. So uh, the, the comment on that by Charlie Hebdo is, uh, and what it says is, Mohammed uh, overwhelmed by fundamentalists. Okay, so it was being very specific as to what, you know, what part of the religion uh, they were talking about. And, uh, and Mohammed with his, you know, uh, head and hands, his, his heart being loved by jerks, right? And uh, so anyway, they, uh, the thing was they reprinted uh, the Mohammed cartoons they th uh, from, the, from the Danish newspaper, uh, a Dutch newspaper, and they threw in uh, some of their own. And uh, as it turned out, it was a great uh, commercial success at the time. It like tripled their uh, circulation. Uh, but there were, there were things happening even at that point where they were uh, taken to court 
for publishing those cartoons on the, on the grounds that it incited hatred. Uh, and fortunately, they were acquitted uh, because uh, <laughs> uh, the, the thing about the, the big word that I would, would use when it comes to what you're offended about is context. It's, it's like if you want to be offended by something and you don't know the context of it, well, then, you know, go home and do your reading or check Google or, some, or something like that. Uh, because, I mean, you know, just this, um, just this act uh, put the, uh, the, the staff of Charlie Hebdo um, on a hit list by Al Qaeda. And, but the thing is, and you heard a whole lot of bullshit in America about this sort of thing, which I'll get into in a second, but the important thing to remember is it's a different culture over there. They are a secular culture in France. And, and so, you know, which actually uh, dates back to the days of uh, Daumier and is uh, this particular character of uh, caricature of uh, King Louis Philippe uh, as uh, uh, <laughs> Rabelais Gargantua. Uh, actually led to um, Daumier's imprisonment. That was 1932, okay? He was thrown in prison for his cartoons. Here are more cartoons of uh, <laughs> that he did once he got out, uh, right? This is... Uh, 1932? Yeah, 1832. And, um, yeah, and, the, and the one over here, the, the metamorphosis of uh, King Louis Philippe into a bear. And again, you know, here's the context there, is foire in, in French also means fathead, right? So basically, the, you know, he was, this, this was his commentary on uh, a bourgeois uh, king. And um, yeah, so political leaders who are fatheads, you know, deserve to be caricatured, don't you think? <laughs> and, and so, um, um, okay, and so, and so here, I also, um, uh, I've been a contributing editor of print magazine uh, for a while, and um, and it was like the um, the day that the Charlie Hebdo uh, uh, happened, uh, the the murders happened was January seventh, twenty fifteen, and I immediately sat down and 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 wrote uh, a response, and uh, which here you can you can see the. Uh, the, the intro, and basically it, uh, I started out by relating it uh, in particular to my uh, love of Harvey Kurtzman in my uh, formative years, and uh, and then got into the uh, the realist, was a, which was another part. But the, okay, here's what I was talking about. It's like, you know, the, uh, the uh, you know, the, the graphic uh, images appear to be much more sacred than, uh, than religions, and uh, Oh, and yeah, when it comes to comics, the uh, the hype Hollywood, uh, the Hollywood hype uh, machine known as the San Diego Comic Con, uh, you know, pales in comparison to the uh, the festival that France puts on for comics uh, every year. And you know, so there's you know a degree of uh, sophistication that our our country continues to uh, to lack. In fact, it's kind of heading down the other other way. And, uh, you know, so I, I pretty much, uh, you know, I, I put in Daumier there, uh, of course, and, um, and like getting, getting towards the, uh, the conclusion, uh, let's see, uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, terrorist, terrorists, you know, who, uh, who kill um, expression are, you know, unequivocally abhorrent, and, uh, and then, not also talking about not only you know w w were they in trouble uh, ten years be uh, before uh, this happened, which was like uh, yeah, it was ten years when they first started doing the getting a uh, fatwa uh, uh, declared against them, and so it's like even four years ago uh, the offices were were attacked and destroyed. Two years ago uh, the um, the editor in chief, uh, uh, Char, said, "I'd rather die standing than live on my knees." Referring to the fact that you know comics are being threatened, you know, to that degree. And what are my options? And the uh, and the option, you know, we'll, the only other option would, would be uh, not not to uh, 
published, but they went and they and they did, you know, continue publishing, and it was like, you know, the, the circulation, it went into re reprints and the circulation was, you know, over a million. It's like the very next week they managed to find another place where they could do the, uh, do the publishing. Was Stefan Murray? Yeah, yeah, he was, he was one of the, uh, one of the people, and, um, and so also I think some, somewhere along the way I mentioned, um, uh, uh, I'll be mentioning uh, Thomas Nast because he's, uh, yeah, he's someone who, you know, again, you know, uh, uh, most recently, you know, he was, uh, his life was in danger when he was alive, but, you know, here you have an incident where uh, the, um, uh, the, what was it, the, uh, he's, uh, he was, uh, somebody wanted to nominate him for the, uh, uh, the 2012 Hall of Fame in New, New Jersey, and there was, uh, you know, both political parties fought to stop, to take him off the, the ballot. You know, it's like, you know, the Hall of Fame in, it's fucking New Jersey, come on. <laughs> you know, that, that sort of thing. Let's, let's not take ourselves too, and, you know, and they were just basically, wrong. so that's what provoked this um, uh, back several years ago. And then there was various things about, uh, oh, part of the basis was uh, that he was uh, being accused of being anti-Catholic uh, and anti-Irish, uh, which, um, you know, I'm, I'm both of the above. And, you know, here's an example um, of, of that sort of thing where, uh, talking about this cartoon, uh, they portray uh, Irish men as, as apes and, you know, they burned down a, a school, which, you know, they actually did. But, you know, again, it was a particular type of Irishman, right? And again, in context, because these were the Irishmen that were, you know, maybe a lot of you know already know about Ness's uh, battle with Boss Tweed. It was like the Irishman that was, you know, that were still on Boss Tweed's side. Uh, that was the, the uh, Boss Tweed's, you know, uh, famous quote, I, I don't, you know, I don't care what the newspaper says about me because my constituents can't read. This is referring to the Irish report. And he said, you know, but they, you know, they can understand the damn cartoons. And so that's, you know, that, that's why, you know, they, they were after that. And, uh, and so, you know, and I wrapped up the whole thing with uh, a Thanksgiving picture, which is basically, you know, uh, that, that, that he did, which was Uncle Sam uh, carving up the turkey and, you know, people, uh, you know, of all uh, ethnic groups were represented, including at the, the very end, an Irish uh, man and his, and his wife. And so, which actually brings me to the, uh, the Eisner Awards. This year, I'm a uh, one of six Eisner Award judges for, and 